lot to get to today, starting with headlines, Mal Pal. We've got headlines from across the state of Texas, of and a lot of them. I sent them to you. And uh, in an email, and I said, don't worry about making a lower third for each of these. That feels like it would be a bit excessive. I grouped uh, them in together. Because there's a lot. That's fine. Yeah. We'll start uh, with the news. We'll start in the college front. And that is, I, I don't know if you guys talked about this on Republic of Football, the podcast that you are producer. You we are sure producer did. Of. We did. Uh, Dave Aranda. Dave Aranda. Uh, Day Veranda. His uh, gotten <laughs> his, a tongue twister. Uh, his, his, uh, his day veranda. Um, <laughs> he's gotten a uh, contract extension from Baylor through the year 2029. Now, last year he was making about three million dollars. We know that just through like finding out mm-hmm. about it. Baylor doesn't have to tell us how much he makes because Baylor's a private institution, um, so we don't know. I don't think uh, I haven't seen. The I, ha- I I I think I looked at it. Looked it up to see if there was any information about it, any details, he, but I couldn't find anything. He, I think it's fair to say he got a raise. And I think yeah. it's fair to yeah. say that he, uh, we know he's, he's extended through 2029. They've announced that, but they don't have to announce his salary. Uh, but Dave Aranda has gotten an, an extension uh, through 2029 after taking Baylor to a Sugar Bowl win. Um, Much deserved. I would say probably well deserved. I would like an eight year contract extension <laughs> in a giant race. That feels fun. Being, being a college football coach seems fun until it's not. Right, that's it does. The, that's the best way to put it. Sounds like a good job. It you feels get a lot like of a perks. good job until it's not. Until and then it's, it's a bad not. job. Yeah. And then you don't have one. Yeah. Uh, but we we did go into depth about this. So if you guys want to listen to more yeah. about that, uh, go to Republic, the of Republic Football. Football. Last week it was last week's uh, episode on Wednesday. So if you want to hear more in depth about our that, our college we did. football podcast that's sweeping the nation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any data to back that up, but just go. With <laughs> it, <apparently. laughs> go uh, with it. Okay. Into some high school coaching changes, and and, and we'll start with the three state champion head coaches who changed jobs this past week. We'll start with the one that I think probably caught most people by surprise. We, we mentioned it briefly on, um, on Friday's Mailbag Show, but Steve Huff is going to be the new head coach at Decatur. Steve Huff is leaving College Station where he, of course, took them to a state championship in 2017. They lost in overtime in the state championship game this past year. Uh, he is going to be... Um, the new head coach at Decatur, moving from College Station uh, up there to Decatur. And, and and perhaps you are thinking, why? Why why would you go do that? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of reasons from what I understand. One of them is that I know he's got a lot of family in Oklahoma, and so he wanted to get farther north. Um, that's one thing to keep an eye on. The other thing, or the one thing to, to keep in mind, the other thing is that I believe he is going to get to be, uh, he has pretty close ties with the new, or with the um, uh, Decatur ISD mm-hmm. athlete, uh, superintendent, um, uh, Chad Jones, Dr. Chad Jones. Uh, they are, Decatur's in a bit of flux. Decatur's at a weird job right now. You may remember a couple of years ago, uh, two years ago, or June, God, Lee, it's it feels like it's it been all a runs years. together. <laughs> In June, they more or less ran uh, Mike Fuller out. Uh, the school board did the school board thing, uh, where they were just you know it was it was small town politics at its worst. They ran Mike Fuller out despite being pretty successful. They promoted uh, Ty Lang, who served as the interim coach for 2021. He will not be the head coach. Uh, they open it up, they brought in Steve Huff, the head coach there at College Station. I think a lot of what he's going to need to do is just kind of settle the waters. That's a big job for him to do there, but uh, but certainly uh, a successful head coach and a state champion head coach as Steve Huff is moving to Decatur. Let's now go to uh, Marshall. Marshall has made a head, co- uh, a head coaching move. You remember that Jake Greedle uh, is out there at, uh, at at Marshall. They have gone and, uh, and picked up a, another big time. Uh, Jake Greedle left to go to Bastrop. They have a new head coach. It is uh, Jack Alvarez. Jack Alvarez is, of course, the believing Cuero to go be the head coach there at Marshall. He is a well-known name, a state champion head coach. He's got a state championship uh, at Ennis. Uh, he led Kirbyville back to a couple title games back in the twenty late twenty teens. Twenty no, the first the twenty aughts. Yeah, the twenty aughts. Um, he has he after uh, he spent two seasons there at Cuero. After his first year was okay, his second year was Bafo. They go to the state semifinals there at, at Aquero. Um, I would say this is probably a bit of a surprise, but at the same time, um, Marshall's a good job, 
and Quero is now a very good job on the market. So Quero is open uh, as Jack Alvarez is leaving to go take over at Marshall. And finally, this came down late last week uh, as far as state champion head coaches are concerned. Uh, Todd Peterman. You may remember Todd Peterman as the guy who helped lead DeSoto to yeah. their state championship back in 2016. Um, they go to uh, – he, he there's another weird thing in DeSoto. Uh, another, I don't know, made the wrong people mad there in DeSoto. He says, okay, I'm just going to leave. He goes to Fort Worth Brewer. Fort Worth Brewer, he has now resigned there at Fort Worth Brewer. Uh, they were pretty good in 2020, made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then 2021, they go 8-3. and three. Um, you know, in, in the first round of the playoffs. But uh, he is going to resign there. Um, there. It's a, a Brewer's pretty uh, pretty attractive opening, I would say. They've got good um, good facilities. It's a good spot in the Metroplex. Uh, but Todd Peterman is leaving Fort Worth Brewer, resigning there. So uh, Fort Brewer is now open there at uh, west of Fort Worth. Okay, other coaching changes. Uh, reported by our own Matt Stepp, uh, although I believe it was um, someone with the uh, Wichita Falls Time Record news up there that got it first, that Coppell is going to be making a hire. They're going to be hiring a uh-huh. pending port approval. They will be hiring uh, Antonio Wiley, the head coach at Wichita Falls Hershey. Um, I am a Coppell grad. I was going to say, are you excited about that? I'm a Coppell grad. And I, so I had a lot of people blowing up my phone uh-huh. and saying, who's this guy? What's his deal? <laughs> um this is about as close to a home run hire as I think it can be for Capel. I think that Antonio Wiley is one of the best young up-and-coming coaches in the state. Uh, what he's done there with Shell Falls Hershey is remarkable. Remember, they came within basically like a play of playing for a title game this year, mm-hmm. playing for a title this year. Um, they have been sensational. Um, he was on our 40 under 40 a couple of years ago back in 2020. Uh, I think this is a home run hire. I've been telling all the Capel folks, I'm like, this is big doings, like, there's a lot of reasons to be excited about Antonio Wiley. It's an attractive job too. At uh, at, at Coppell. Her, Coppell. It is. It is. It's. It's, it's a know, good area. It's a good you area. Know. It's a good area. They got great facilities. Yeah. There. Yeah. Um. You know, th- if somebody can give them that spark, they can certainly. They right. can certainly go and win. One thing to keep in mind, though, I think people, you know, one thing to keep in mind about Wichita Falls, if you don't know what's going on there, Wichita Falls has three high schools right now. Or mm-hmm. there, there are three high schools, right? I think City View is its own school district. Okay. Wichita Falls ISD has three high schools. They have Old High, they have Ryder, and they have Hershey. Okay? They're going to close all three of them in two years. All three of them are going to close, and they're going to open, they're building two brand new buildings that they are going to consolidate those three high schools into two. I think they, nice. they, have, they have very boring names. I love you, Wichita yeah. Falls. They have like it's like Memorial and Legacy or something like that. Very basic. Very yeah. basic. Um, at least for now. One like on the west side of town, one on the east side of town. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to consolidate three schools into two. So for Antonio Wiley, I think he was looking at Hershey and being like, "Well, I don't know what my status here in Wichita Falls ISD is going to be. If I have an opportunity to move up to a six A job in the Metroplex, maybe it's a good move for me." So mm-hmm. that's one thing uh, that I, I considered there was uh, was Wichita Falls Hershey's kind of status for their future, but Antonio Wiley, uh, bending, pending board approval, will be the new head coach at Coppell. Cowboy fight never dies. Uh, Laporte has hired Pasadena Adobe's Kevin Bernithi to be their next head coach. Laporte, Laporte's an interesting job. That w- when they're really good, when they've got a couple of cats, they're really, really good. They've been down a little bit there. Uh, he is. He has some ties to uh, Kevin Bernithi, who's done good things at Adobe, uh, you know, running the, uh, uh, the, the wing T offense. The... Uh, he's done some really good things. He does have some ties to Laporte. He was an assistant for Coach Jeff Leroux of, uh, for a couple of years, uh, but he takes over there. He's they, he's thirty three and ten at Pasadena Adobe. Uh, nothing an attorney knows about Kevin Bernithi could be the new next head coach at Laporte. Lubbock ISD made a couple of hires this week uh, or last week rather. That would be uh, first of all at Monterey. Lubbock Monterey has hired Duncanville defensive coordinator Jed Thrash, our buddy Jed Thrash who's done a great job as Reginald Samples' as defensive coordinator the past couple of years is getting a chance to be a head coach once again. Uh, he was head coach for at McGregor for a couple, a couple of years. He had uh, assistant coach jobs at Lake Travis, Westlake, Rockwall Heath. I mean, he's got a, a great resume. Now defense coordinator at Duncanville. He will be the next head coach at Lubbock Monterey. Also, Lubbock Estacado is hired. Uh, you may remember that uh, uh, that Joe Cluley uh, was uh, took another uh, took another job. Went out east uh, to oh, gee, Mount Pleasant. Sorry, I always get Mount Pleasant and, and Vernon mixed yeah, up. I, I was a lot like, of, which a lot one of is east it? Texas mountains. Yeah, um, where's Mount Calm? 
I gotta look that uh, up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's off topic. Off topic. <laughs> uh, they have hired offensive assistant coach from Fort Penn Hightower, uh, Will Blaylock, to be their head, uh, next head coach. Uh, he's got ties to West Texas. He was a West Texas A&M guy. Um, he played at Tulane and Baylor uh, for a spell. He's been on the staff at Hightower, but also kind of uh, largely in the Houston area. He's been a valued assistant. Uh, Twitter kind of blew up when he got this head coaching job. A lot of people excited for Will Blaylock to be the next head coach at Lubbock Estacado. Dallas Skyline uh, really wants the jewel of Dallas ISD. Um uh, when they had Reginald Samples, they have made a hire. They are bringing in Jacody Coleman to be their next head coach. They uh, Jacody Coleman has, for the past couple of years, been the defense coordinator at Umbla Tascasita. Uh, big doings there. He's been there since 2012, been the uh, defensive coordinator for at least the past couple of years. Uh, but Jacody Coleman's going to be the next head coach at Dallas Skyline. Skyline's an interesting position. Dallas Skyline, if you don't know, they're a magnet school, so that they can technically draw from all of Dallas ISD. That's um, awesome. The part of why I think Reginald Samples was able to have such great success at Skyline or at Skyline was that he was able to kind of like leverage that unique position as a magnet school to turn them into a powerhouse. But Jacody Coleman will be the next head coach there at Skyline uh, for the you know to come forward twenty twenty two. Killeen Chaparral is a school that's going to exist mm -hmm. in twenty twenty two. Uh, they are opening a new school in Killeen. Killeen Chaparral uh, is the is the name of the school, and they are going. They have made their first ever hire of their first ever head coach. It is a familiar name to people in Central Texas. It is Alan Hare. Alan Hare has most recently been the head coach at um, at Salado. Uh, he's done fantastic work there. Uh, he he is from hometown. Uh, of, of Salado, but he's going to get an opportunity to kind of launch this program there at Colleen Chaparral. He's 132 and 92 overall. Um, he was a he runs a slot T, so I would yeah. have to imagine the slot T is coming to Colleen Chaparral, which for a young program I think is is, is a good thing, generally speaking. Um, but Alan Hare is going to be the next head coach at the new school there in Killeen. Uh, speaking of new schools, Frisco Panther Creek, another Frisco school. Frisco Panther Creek. One thing about them before I get into who they hired as their next as their first head coach. They apparently have their um, mascot up for a vote, and it's apparently between the Panthers. Panther okay, Creek, which would make sense. Panther Creek Panthers, the Pumas. There are no Pumas. I was going to say there aren't any Pumas. Or the Pythons. And uh, are there any snakes? Yeah, the uh, cobras and the vipers. Cobras. Okay. Oh, viper. Yeah. 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 A few more. Uh, yeah, there, but but very you know low low number of snakes, uh, rattlers, right? You know, yeah, rattlers, yeah, yeah, yeah. The handful of rattlers. Um, I'd go with pumas. I I think they. There's I, a lot of panthers. I think they've got an opportunity to do a little different. I want them uh -huh. to stay away from panthers. Anyway, all that's to say, uh, uh, Clint Surratt is going to be the next head coach there. He, of course, has been an assistant head coach there at Frisco Lone Star under Coach Jeff Rayburn. Jeff Rayburn has a lot of great things to say about Clint Surratt. He's going to be the next head coach at Panther Creek, uh, which is going to be their a full-fledged varsity program in 2022. They're in a district. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, right into the fire. Uh, they got to figure out their school colors and their mascot. We don't know anything about them except their name and their head coach, Clint Surratt. Uh, finally, or finally, as, as far as coaching changes are concerned, before we give a call to Jason Hody at uh, Burton, um, you may remember a couple of years ago a pretty remarkable story coming out of San Antonio um, in at San Antonio Memorial. San Antonio Memorial uh, head coach Kemi Lewis helped lead them to uh, un you know they they won like something like one game in the previous like three seasons or something like that. They, they, he and in 2017 he led them to their second ever uh, play. Uh, Kemi Lewis led the Minutemen to their second ever playoff appearance. Uh, their first district title ever. They'd won one game in the last two seasons. Uh, he was our DCTF for a 5A Coach of the Year in 2017. Uh, he is on the move. He's going to be the new defensive coordinator at San Antonio Harlan, the 6A uh, ranks. So San Antonio Memorial is open. Kemi Lewis is on the move. Uh, we'll save the other thing for later because we want to make sure we get Coach Hody on. Uh, but we'll talk a little bit about the TSWA All-State teams, which were announced last week. Those are headlines. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.